Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. The A7 Corsair II and F4 Phantom II were both lightweight fighters that the F-A-18 Hornet was initially intended to replace in the United States Navy. The plane was ultimately transformed into a multi-role fighter, able to carry out both air-to-air -air and air-to-ground missions. The United States Air Force's lightweight fighter program featured competition between the General Dynamics YF-16 and Northrop YF-17. The U.S. Navy assessed both aircraft in 1973. The Naval Fighter Attack Experimental VFAX program was renamed to the Navy Air Combat Fighter, NACF, in May 1974 to make use of lightweight fighter technology. As a result, the YF-17 was transformed into the F-A-18 Hornet. To create the F-18, also known as the McDonnell Douglas Model 267, the YF-17 underwent significant modifications. For carrier operations, the landing gear, folding wings, and catapult attachments were strengthened, along with the airframe, undercarriage, and tail hook. The separation between the primary landing gear tires is known as the wheel track. Wheel tracks on the FA-18 are 10.2 feet compared to the 6.83 feet on the YF-17. By extending the wheel track of the F-A-18, the aircraft's stability during carrier landings was improved. Other critical systems include the air brake. On the rear upper side of the aircraft, there is a sizable hinged panel known as the F-A-18 air brake. It is used to make the aircraft slower by generating more drag. The air brake can be extended to a number of positions and is deployed by a hydraulic actuator. Systems like the air brake are tested before the Hornet takes off. In the 1970s, the F-15 Eagle was specifically designed as an air superiority fighter. In a sense, it was the main fighter in the U.S. Air Force, like the Hornet was the main fighter in the U.S. Navy. The Eagle was designed to counter the MiG-25 Foxbat, which turned out to be much less capable than anticipated. In order to ensure optimum performance, longevity, and safety, the air and ground crews of the F-15E Strike Eagle perform pre-flight checks and routine maintenance. The crew chief thoroughly examines the aircraft during the pre-flight inspection. Wait, so 
They visually inspect the outside and inside for any damage or flaws. Functional tests are also carried out to confirm the correct operation of systems, like engines, avionics, and weapons. No, this gun was terrible. Yes. Yeah. This gun is still terrible. Still. Yeah, he does. Switch it arms. Just like the FA-18, an air brake on the F-15 serves to slow down the aircraft enough to prevent runway overshoots. A significant amount of resistance is provided by air brakes. The amount of resistance an air brake provides to the airflow is measured by its coefficient of drag. If the air brake were to fail or in some other emergency, such as brake failure, an alternative method is required to stop landing the aircraft. That is where the U.S. Air Force uses a land-based aircraft arresting system. U.S. Air Force fighters and attack aircraft are equipped with tail hooks. In an emergency situation, the tail hook is lowered and snags an arresting cable stretched across the runway. The cable is usually part of the back 12 system used to bring the aircraft safely to a standstill. To validate its safety and efficacy, the back 12 arresting system is put through a series of tests by the United States Air Force. During these, actual aircraft are arrested. For a more mobile system, the mobile aircraft arresting system, MASS, is the name of the Back 12 arresting system's mobile variant. Simple to set up, the MASS is a mobile system that is easy to move around. It can be used in many different places, such as training grounds, temporary airfields, and forward operating bases. There are several crucial parts that make up the mobile aircraft arresting system. First, there is a trailer that houses the various components of the arresting system and makes transportation simple. Second, there is the arresting cable, which is stretched across the runway to catch the aircraft and is made of sturdy, high-strength steel. Various systems are utilized by the U.S. Air Force, including a strong and long-lasting temporary option for constructing runways, taxiways, and aircraft parking areas. This system is known as AM2 airfield matting. Its superior strength and durability to its forerunner, XM19 matting, were developed by the U.S. Navy in the late 1960s. AM2 matting is connected by interlocking lugs and is made up of full and half panels that fit together and are each 2 feet by 12 feet and 2 feet by 6 feet in size. A 
A small team can quickly assemble and disassemble this tough material. Its adaptability helps the U.S. Air Force build temporary airfields quickly, which benefits forward operating bases, training grounds, and disaster relief operations. An aircraft designed for use in austere and tactical situations is the C-17 Globemaster III transport aircraft. The U.S. Air Force was looking for a replacement for the Lockheed C-130 Hercules cargo plane in the 1970s. As a result of this program, the C-17 was developed. In order to operate in environments with limited runway length and width, the C-17 has an advanced thrust reversal system. Each of the four engines on the C-17 Globemaster III has a thrust reverser. These thrust reversers, which resemble doors that open in the back of the engine, help slow down the plane by directing the engine's thrust backward. Not only does this reverse thrust system then allow the Globemaster III to stop efficiently, but it also allows the aircraft to back up, which makes it easier to turn in tight spaces. Turbofan blades of the C-17 engines are protected from ingesting foreign object debris by the placement of the engines and a thrust reverser blast shield. These blades still require regular maintenance. Non-scheduled maintenance is done in a maintenance and repair center. This includes all maintenance other than routine. A high bypass turbofan engine, the Pratt & Whitney PW2000, is also known by the military designation F117. They were created for the Boeing 757. The precise maintenance intervals for the engines may change based on elements such as the number of flight hours, the environment in which they are used, and maintenance standards established by the manufacturer and the Air Force. To make sure the engines are in top working condition, routine inspections, servicing, and repairs are carried out. Similarly, the landing gear of the C-17 takes a beating and needs to be checked and maintained regularly. Checking and maintaining the 282,000 pound C-17 requires hydraulics to lift it off the ground. This is accomplished by using large aircraft jacks. Once the wheels are off the ground, these technicians are then able to perform checks and the maintenance which may be required. This ensures the Globemaster III can perform landing after landing without incident.
the abilities of the United States Air Force and Navy are constantly being expanded. This would mean nothing without maintaining the resources already at their disposal and ensuring the safety of the personnel who fly these aircraft. Maintenance and repair and runway arresting procedures make up a large part of a well-oiled machine. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.